Hi everyone, I'm Cal Spriggs. In my last video I showed you all how I got my Ultramarine Firstborn painted and ready for the tabletop. In this video I'm going to go through doing the same thing on my Ultramarine's vehicles. My Land Raiders, my Ironclad Dreadnoughts, my Rhinos, my Whirlwinds, and everyone's favorite, Land Speeders. Let's get to it. So I've had these Space Marine vehicles for well over a decade, uh, many of them for two decades at this point. And it's been hard to get excited about painting them, uh, assembling them, playing with them, sure, but painting vehicles has been a struggle for me consistently. So I'm taking this opportunity to try and get caught up. Uh, up first I have my scratch-built uh, cardboard Land Raider. Now this thing has faithfully served me since 5th edition Apocalypse, where I initially built it to house my Assault Terminators to go in and kill Super Heavies in Apocalypse games way back in the days of 5th uh, edition. And, I mean, it's alright. Uh, I, I had another Land Raider that I me took the measurements for. Um, you can see here, I actually did a pretty good job, especially considering I just did it with cardboard, scissors, and a, a knife, so... Um, but I feel like it needs some touching up. Um, the sides are obviously pretty plain. They're just flat cardboard that I glued a, a couple doors on. The front hatch opens, though. Um, you can see the treads are a little wonky, and I hate how you can see the corrugations of the cardboard. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, work on it. I'm going to pull this door off, pull the side sponsons off, and clean it up a bit, um, try and get it to match what uh, a Land Raider looks like a bit more, uh, adding on some bits of chipboard to uh, to try and give it a little bit more depth and, and just make it look better. Uh, and these angled bits, once I, I cut those out of chipboard, I think are really going to help. So the first thing I did was pry off the uh, plastic door. I think that's a Rhino door that I had on either side, um, which actually worked well enough for the scale. But... Uh, want to get those off, get them uh, swapped out, and uh, get the rest of, it, of the side sponsons off and cleaned up. Um, as part of this, I wanted to cover up that uh, cardboard corrugation, so I uh, sliced some really thin strips of cardboard, evenly measured out. I think they were one centimeter, uh, uh, maybe two centimeters, I, I can't remember exactly. Uh, made made these long strips, and as you can see, I started putting those on the sides, um, acting as sort of a, a trim. It was a fairly fast process um, getting it up. It it actually looked kind of neat with it being the white cardboard. It almost looked uh, ultra-rain already, um, but I I was gonna prime it all, so I uh, I didn't worry too much about that. Next thing was the chipboard. I went ahead and and took some comparisons to the side of the uh, normal Land Raiders. You can see one of them in progress uh, there to the side. And uh, yeah, I just measured it up, uh, took some comparisons, and then once I had what I thought looked good, I went ahead and started uh, putting them together and, and gluing them together. Now, I did uh, use one as a carbon copy for the other because they're just the two different sides of the Land Raider. So here I am cutting out the second one for that uh, cardboard Land Raider. Now I, I don't expect to use this thing in tournaments. I don't expect to really use it for much of anything other than the fact that hey, I, I built this thing uh, a while back and I want it to look as good as possible. And here it is with the side sponsons and the, uh, the upgraded sides glued on. I think it looks much sharper. It looks much more... Uh, like a, an actual Land Raider. Uh, and then uh, next part was priming it, which uh, went pretty good. Um, and then I moved on to my next Land Raider. Now this one was a traditional Land Raider. I'd customized with that uh, double eagle uh, head up on the top. Um, really all I had to do with this was prime it. You can see uh, went pretty well. Um, I wasn't really satisfied with the light blue paint I had, but what can you do, right? So um, to get it to match more of the ultramarine color, I actually went in here with the uh, 
a blue shade from Games Workshop and, and just hit it all with a, a coat of blue shade. And you can actually see, thanks to the powers of uh, time travel or actually just video editing, that I, I'd been working on this uh, concurrent with the Cardboard Land Raider, uh, testing out the both the priming and the, the shading and just kind of seeing what I liked. But the, the blue shade really brought it off, uh, brought it back to what I wanted, um, that darker blue. And, and here it is, uh, shaded and then with the, uh, the, the metal bits painted black. And I used Iron Breaker once I had those metal bits uh, painted black. And then Iron Breaker did a fantastic job. It gives that nice kind of silver bolt gun uh, color to it. Um, and this this it was it was actually kind of embarrassing to me because I had put off painting this thing for oh gosh probably 15 years um, which is longer than some people have played the hobby and once I got it primed and and stuff I think I got this thing painted in about 45 minutes of actual work uh, I went really fast um, I did uh, initially paint this this eagle silver because I wanted the gold that I hit it with later to really pop uh, and be a lot brighter and you can see me doing that now uh, I there's a lot of gold paints that just really struggle with having that really bright gold color uh, unless you hit them first with something like iron breaker underneath as as kind of a base layer and then they really pop so I, I like how this this came out with that uh, double eagle on top. I'm calling this Land Raider Aquilius, by the way, for the the double eagle, since you know the, there's the Aquila for uh, the Imperial Aquila, or, or however you say it. I'm not good on Latin, uh, but here it is, um, primed, uh, blue, shaded, got the the red laser tips on the las cannons. I think it looks really good. I'm excited to actually have it uh, on the tabletop and and see how it does. Um, Moving on, here's my third Land Raider. This one I got painted. You can see it's pretty dusty. There's some sloppy paint on it and stuff. I got this one used. Um, I think I got it as a package deal with a Land Speeder and uh, Whirlwind. And I mean, it's painted all right, but I wanted to touch it up and make it look better. So first thing I did was clean it up. Um, used a, a blue paint that I hoped matched and uh, cleaned up the, the areas next thing I did was go in and add some gold highlights to some of the little gubbins all over it just to make it match with my army's theme painted a lot of areas that the original painter had missed uh with black um they'd they'd slapped a lot of silver on in, in various places other areas there was just nothing painted on it wasn't even primed so I used uh, uh contrast paint black uh paint to go ahead and get that and then I gave it a, a wash. I gave it a black wash across the whole vehicle that kind of mellowed out the different colors that I'd added. It also did a uh, really good job of, again, addressing those hard to reach areas that the previous painter had not gotten to. And here it is. Um, again, this one, I don't know, probably took me maybe 45 minutes. So I got three Land Raiders done. Now I just need to work on my rhinos and my whirlwind and my ironclad dreadnoughts, and my land speeders. Let's see what I can get done. So here's my old whirlwind. It's one of the original uh, whirlwind types with a, the original hull. Um, previously owned, and the previous owner liked to splatter blood all over everything from the looks of it. Lots of paint chips as well, so I wanted to clean it up. So first thing I did was uh, clip off the broken bits of the uh, uh, dozer blade and went ahead and tried a couple different looks for replacing it. One was the bigger dozer blade and the other was just kind of replacing the spikes on the prow. Uh, I didn't really like the look of it uh, with just the hedgerow cutter type spikes so I decided to go with this bigger dozer blade which I think I had off of a, a Lehman Russ or something. So glued that on, relatively easy fix and the very next thing I went to do was go ahead and prime it. Um, once I got it primed, I used the same blue paint, and this this came out much darker, much more like what I was looking for, and uh, hit it with some blue wash, and then uh, later on uh, I did some metal highlights. You can see I, I'd kind of gotten started on that while I was taking a look at it, 
And then next I moved on to one of my rhinos. Now this rhino, again, previously owned, and this previous owner did a really good job. You can see they even did the interior before they assembled it. But they put a lot of stencils on, and some of the stencils didn't match up. So I stripped those off. Uh, that was pretty easy. I just used a plastic brush, and uh, they came right off. Next up, I have my two ironclad uh, dreadnoughts. Now, one of these is a traditional ironclad, and the other one is an assault on Blackreach dreadnought that I uh, modified a bit. You can see he's got a wrecking ball. Looks pretty cool. I had to paint the base of the normal ironclad dreadnought, and then I had this other base. So uh, I wanted to make my assault on Blackreach uh, dreadnought stand a little taller so he looked a little more impressive so I had some uh, pieces of the XPS foam that I've been using from uh, making terrain glued them on they made some nice rock but they needed a little bit more pizzazz so I I put some uh, cork chips on there to you know make it look like sand and rock so a lot of vehicles done now all I have to work on is my land speeders which is totally my favorite because I've had lots of great luck with land speeders throughout my gaming career. Here goes. So I have a lot of land speeder bits. You can see just a pile of them. Some of them are fully completed. Some of them are in pieces. Uh, some of them are fully painted. Um, so I just wanted to try and get as many of them together as I could. Now, when I Initially started this, I was kind of hoping that uh, land speeders would still be in the, the codex. Um, by the time I started painting any of these, I already knew they weren't. So I was a little disheartened um, by that thought. Um, but I've got all these these bits. I've got all these land speeders. I figured I might as well get them all together, right? So uh, first thing was sorting through what all I had and putting it together. Um, this... Uh, went pretty smooth. I actually I sorted all the bits pretty well and, and my bits boxes are, are pretty well sorted in, in general. But I got uh, out of those um, I got six total land speeders that, uh, that all match up and I can put in two different squadrons or, or field however. Three of them are the old Typhoon and, and three of them are the standard uh, just normal land speeders. These vehicles, it was the same as the other ones. I got, pr got them primed blue and then I just started uh, painting them. Now, ironically, even though they're smaller vehicles than the others, they have a lot of different surfaces and a lot of nooks and crannies to get. So getting these guys uh, uh, initially shaded blue took me longer doing any one of these land raiders and, or land speeders than it did my land raider, which was kind of funny to me. So in, in total, I had three of them that I had to prime. Um, the other three uh, were in, basically intact. So I knocked these three out in, I think, probably an hour and a half between uh, getting them shaded and then getting all the, uh, the little details, fine details, painted. The kind of disheartening thing about painting vehicles for me has always been how easily they are destroyed or how ineffective they can be at times and it's such a big model and it's so hard to get all the little details and make them look good with these I I kind of was cheating I was I wasn't painting them kind of unique I was painting them to match uh, already painted models so I used that to kind of motivate me I didn't have to really think about it I was just trying to match what was already there so um, once I had them shaded, I just went in with uh, bright red, I think Wazdaka red, and got the missiles uh, and the multi melta painted up to match the one that I had on on two of these typhoons. And then I was uh, just real did a real simple job matching the uh, standard land speeder. I have to admit, after almost two decades of ownership of some of these models. It was nice to finally get them out of my bits box, get them fully painted, and have them so I can at least display them on the shelf and not in my pile of shame. And here they all are. I'm really excited to have them tabletop ready. The Space Marines have some really cool vehicles, especially the classic kind of Land Raider shape. The Whirlwind, I'm excited to have actually playable. My Land Speeders and my Ironclad Dreadnoughts have basically been squatted, but it's still nice to have them done. So there we are. I got three Land Raiders, three Rhinos, a Whirlwind, two Ironclad Dreadnoughts, and six Land Speeders, all tabletop ready, all reassembled after years of neglect. And yeah, I know about half of those models are no longer in the Codex and are no longer usable for anything, but 
at least I have the pride of having them done, right? Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have time, go check out my Amazon page. I've got a ton of books out there. Uh, end of the month, I'll have 40 books. I'm really excited about it. Thanks for watching.